Hey y'all, it's Melissa from The Little For The Could and I am doing a little bonus video today. I normally only upload once a week on Fridays, but um, something happened this past Friday, the 22nd, um, so that was just a few days ago, that um, is quite alarming to me and um, I think it's really, really important. And so um, I wanted to share that with you guys now and not wait um, till Friday to post that. So um, I'm sort of hiding in the back of my house um, and the lighting's not great and the background's not great um, because we're having a renovation. We're working on renovations in the front of the house and Zaz is screaming and my husband is using loud, loud tools. So hopefully there won't be too much background noise um, and you can hear what I have to say, but um, this really pertains mostly to the allergy community. Um, so if you um, are an allergy mama or an allergy daddy, or you have food allergies yourself, you're gonna stick around and wanna hear what I have to say. Okay, so here's the deal. First of all, if you're new to my channel, um, just a brief, little snippet about me. Um, I'm a homeschooling mom of three kiddos and my youngest child Ford has um, what you would describe probably as extreme allergies, both food and environmental. Um, and he has other, um, he has chronic illness as well. But I am very active um, in the allergy community and I am very active um, in educating the general public about allergies, specifically food allergies, um, because there are just so many misconceptions about food allergies. I, I was guilty of believing all those misconceptions as well before I um, was thrown into the allergy world um, against my will <laughs> because I, was, um, I had a son who developed terrible food allergies and other allergies. So um, I had to become an advocate for him and I have since become an advocate for all of those who are living with severe allergies um, and especially food allergies. So what I wanna to talk to you today about is um, what happened on Friday the 22nd, which was the FDA um, basically announced a temporary change in food labeling guidelines. So if you're watching this and you're not um, someone who is familiar with food allergies, for those of us that have food allergies or have a child with food allergies, we often kind of joke that we are professional label readers <laughs> because um, I'm sorry if my bird is loud. He's screaming at David because David's coming in and out with tools and it, he, sorry about that. Anyway, <clears throat> sausage is our parrot. If you're new here, you can probably hear him. I can hear him. Um, <clears throat> so food labels are vital for those of us living with allergies because, <clears throat> you know, we sort of read food labels like it's our job because it is because reading a food label is the diff can be the difference in life or death um, for people like my son Ford and he is not the only one and label reading I, is literally a, a job when I go to the grocery store every time I go to the grocery store every item I read the label the ingredients label very thoroughly before I put it in my cart I read it a second time when I put it from my cart to the conveyor belt when I'm checking out and I read it a third time when I get it home and I take it out of the grocery bag and I put it in my kitchen and that is true every I have to do that every time I go grocery shopping every time um, <clears throat> one of the reasons is because if a as the as the labeling laws and requirements stand prior to this new change in requirements um, manufacturers 
of food products are not required to mark their packaging if they change their recipe. Now they do have to, um, prior to this new regulation, they, they do have to reflect those changes in their ingredients label, but they don't have to like slap a big thing on the front of it or something that says we've changed our recipe. So just because you've bought a certain brand of a certain product for years and years and it's always been fine and hasn't had any of your allergens in it, doesn't mean that that could change in any moment. So that's why those of us who have these food allergies and are living with this, we are professional label readers. We have to read every label every time. And um, <clears throat> so basically what the FDA has done because of the concerns during this I'm not going to use the word because apparently face, um, YouTube is um, not a fan of videos with the word in it, but you know all, everybody knows what we're talking about here. Um, the crazy things that are going on in the world right now due to that, the FDA um, has changed temporarily, they say, but they don't give an end date. They have changed their labeling requirements to supposedly help with the um, food chain supply issues that are going on right now in regards to current world events. Um, and for those of us that have food allergies, this is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying and absolutely life-threatening for people like my son Ford and for other people like him that have life-threatening, severe, anaphylactic allergies. So there's nothing we could do about it, unfortunately, I don't think, although fair, um, is meeting with the FDA about this because they share all of our concerns. Obviously, they're um, an organization that is, um, you know, specifically trying to help the food allergy community. So they're meeting with the FDA, but I don't foresee anything changing about this anytime soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read just a little bit um, of the new guidelines to you. Um, in case you haven't seen it, I have posted this link to the FDA page where it talks about this on my Facebook and I haven't put it on my Instagram yet, but I will. So, um, if, and I'll, and I'll post it in the comments below as well. Um, I mean in the description below as well. So you can go those places, um, find me on Facebook, the little four that could find me on Instagram, the little four that could check out the description box below and you can read the whole thing for yourself. But um, the, these are the factors that they're saying, um, are the new guidelines. So safety, safety. So it says the ingredient being substituted for the label ingredient does not cause any adverse health effect, including food allergens, gluten, sulfites, or other foods known to cause sensitivities in some people, for example, glutamates. Okay, so that's partial good news because the way that I have understood this and I've researched this thoroughly and I've been really active in my allergy groups talking to people about this, talking about it to people who are smarter than me because I'm no expert. I probably should have said that from the beginning. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a legal advisor. I'm not an attorney. I'm not um, any of those things. I'm just an allergy mama who is really, really well researched and really, really passionate about educating people about food allergies and what that means. Um, but from my understanding and everyone who I've talked to about this so far, that means that top the top eight allergens still have to be clearly labeled. Okay. Which is great because those are the most common allergens. Um, however, those are the only ones considered. So right off the bat, this first guideline scares me because 
We do have type 8 allergens, but we have other allergens that are anaphylactic allergens to my son that are not one of the type 8 allergens. So the fact that they can exclude that from the label now is terrifying because Ford is so sensitive, and he is not the only one. This is not uncommon. Ford is so sensitive to some of his allergens that just taking a bite of it and then spitting it out, not even swallowing it, could still kill him. He is that sensitive. Um, so that is alarming to me, first of all. But it goes on. Um, quantity, generally present at 2% or less by weight of the finished food. So if it's just in a small quantity, less than 2% um, by weight, then they don't have to include it on the label. Again, terrifying. One of our worst allergies is flax. And so just the tiniest bit of flax sends forward into anaphylax anaphylaxis. He almost died from flax once, and it was a minute amount of flax, like not even a pinch. So that is terrifying. Number three, prominence. The ingredient being omitted or su substituted for the label ingredient is not a major ingredient in the product. So again, they're, they're, they're talking about ingredients that aren't a major ingredient. Well, what does that mean? It, I, it doesn't have to be a major ingredient. If you're allergic to it, you're allergic to it. Number four, characterizing ingredient. The ingredient being omitted or substitute for the label ingredient is not a characterizing ingredient. For example, omitting raisins, a characterizing ingredient in raisin bread. Okay, well, that's fine. But again, I still have my same concern. Then it goes on to say claims. An omission or substitution of the ingredient does not affect any vo voluntary nutrient content or health claims on the label. Okay. And finally, nutrition slash function. An omission or substitution of the label ingredient does not have significant impact on the finished product, including nutritional differences or functionality. Okay. Gotcha. Those two, not a big deal. I understand. But... Here is an example, a specific example of things that are allowed to be changed without being marked on the label, and this is scary to me. Substitution of certain oils may be temporarily appropriate without a label change, such as canola oil for sunflower oil, or maybe black seed oil for sunflower oil, or canola oil. Hello? Now, I know there are some differing opinions in the allergy community about oils um, and whether or not, you know, for example, if you're allergic to flaxseed, um, some say that oils are so refined that you're not going to react to oils. And that's just simply not true. It's just simply not true. I know personal, I have personal experiences with that not being true. Um, so it is possible to be allergic to peanuts, for example, and do fine with peanut oil. It is possible to be allergic to sunflowers and be fine with sunflower oil. It is possible to be allergic to flaxseed and do fine with flaxseed oil, but it's not always the case across the board. So this is scary, scary stuff to me. So I know that there are a lot of hot button controversial issues kind of wrapped up in all of this virus stuff. And so I try to keep my content on my channel um, such that it does not um, ruffle anybody's feathers or talk about controversial things because that is not, not my intent. My intent for my channel is to be a happy place, place to share ideas and share things and a place to advocate for, for um, the food allergy community. So um, I have some additional thoughts about this um, that really make me angry, um, but I'm just coming at it today strictly from the perspective of an allergy parent um, 
because this is scary. And again, I don't foresee anything changing about this at all. I think this is something we're gonna have to just live with temporarily, um, which is just really unfortunate. And it's really, in my opinion, discriminatory because you're basically taking away every prepackaged food there is and you're making it inaccessible for people that, that have food allergies because for us, it's just not worth the risk. Now, this won't change the way we eat a whole, whole lot because quite frankly, there's not very many packaged foods that Ford can eat. So we mostly eat whole foods anyway. Um, so it won't be a drastic change for us, but there are some things that he can have that he enjoys. Um, that we're not going to be able to buy and eat anymore during this time because it's just not worth the risk for us. Um, and I know we're not the only ones that are in that boat. So my allergy people, um, I just wanted to be sure that I got this out on my channel and out on my social media because this is life threatening for people with severe food allergies. This is scary, scary stuff. Um, so just be aware, um, you know, it, each one of us that is living with allergies has to make a decision about, um, you know, risk versus reward. Are you willing to take the risk? Are you not? That's everybody's individual personal, um, choice. We're not. And, um, it really bothers me that this is happening and that this is being seen as an acceptable way to handle this. And I'm not trying to minimize any, um, you know, um, I'm not trying to minimize the impact that food shortages and things like that due to this virus, I, you know, on companies, on manufacturing companies and all that. I understand all of that. I do. But we're talking about people's lives here. It really is upsetting to me that this is happening. Um, and that's really not what this video was about or is about. This video is just about letting you guys know in the allergy community that this is what's happened. And so um, be careful about products because there's really no way for us to be certain anymore um, what's in them or not in them. So normally I would end this video saying read your labels, but it's not really going to do us any good anymore, is it? 